Hey, welcome back to VegPlot uh, in the Polytunnel, obviously. Uh, got quite a bit to do, haven't we? Uh, season's moving on now and uh, there's lots of things to get ready because sowing will start at the end of this month, sort of in March, although uh, one or two things are going to go in today. So this year I've got some Red Baron, uh, I'm going to get them in. Um, these seeds should have gone in a while ago, these are mammoth. These are supposed to go really big, but I think I should have sown these uh, late last year to really get the best out of them. I'm going to try some Senshu yellow. Uh, I think these are normally sown towards the end of the year and then overwintered. They're quite hardy. That's what I've done before anyway, but I'm going to try a few of those as well. Uh, I've also got some Zabrun, uh, which are shallots, and these grew really well for me once on the allotment, so I'm looking forward to trying them again. Uh, and I've got some giant winter spinach from Vital Seeds. I don't know if it focuses that close, but yeah. So I want to get those in the ground. Uh, well, in some trays and things. So I've got that to do. Uh, I've got a lot of tidying up as well. Let me just uh, show you around. I've uh, been pruning the lemon bar, uh, lemon bar, the lemon grass. You can see this one over here. I've given it a bit of a bit of a haircut because it's uh, was looking a bit dead, and I I fear that they <laughs> they may not survive this winter. But yeah, so I've got to give this one a prune back as well, and then I want to check out what's under here, all the dahlias, see how the tubers are going, show you them, uh, and also I want to harvest some of the celeriac. Now. A lot of them are still quite small, so I'm not worried about those, but these over here are looking quite good. Uh, so I'm going to have a couple of celeriac out and we'll see what they look like. And also I want to check out this new compost. I've got a peat-free compost made by Melcourt. I just bought this at the local garden centre. Looks quite nice, so I shall be sowing most of my seeds into that uh, at the start of this year anyway. Okay, I think that's about it. Oh yeah, and last thing. I had a lot of overwintered chilies from last year and I I don't know if they're going to make it this year but basically I don't want them anyway. I had enough of chilies for the moment. I've got so many in storage and so much dried chilli flakes that I just don't need any more. So all the chilies are coming out of the polytunnel this year and it's just going to be concentrating on about the 24, 26 varieties of tomatoes I've got going in this year. <laughs> anyway, right, I'll put it down, I'll get on and um, prune the rest of this lemongrass because it smells amazing actually. Uh, grown from seed, I think, uh, let me have a look, I've got a label on here somewhere. Yeah, not last year, a year before I sowed these in 2021, 21st of April, uh, J January, 21st of January it seems. Yeah, lemongrass, one of two. So, I sowed the seeds in trays um, in little modules and um, grew them on indoors in a sunny south-facing windowsill and they did really well. We've had some lovely lemongrass off them so I can recommend trying lemongrass if you haven't grown it before. In a polytunnel that is, keeps it nice and warm. It's amazing actually you can really smell this delicious lemony 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 smell. It's amazing even though the plant isn't you know doing all that well. As you can see on the end there some of them are green and they're just Oh, they smell heavenly. <laughs> so all this uh, is going to go on the compost. During the summer it comes out of out of the polytunnel and I just put it in the garden to be honest and keep it watered in a tray but that's all I've done for that. Right so put this up here. Right here we go. Right that's those two. Just uh, remember to keep them watered so they don't dry out. I don't I think that's why they've uh, gone brown. I think it's because of the cold. Um, but yeah, so that's those there. Right, let's um, let's go and get one of these celeriac or a couple of celeriac, shall we? Right. So these celeriac, did I say? Don't think I said. Yeah, these were planted on the seventh of May last year, and they were grown outside, just outside the polytunnel, all year until just before winter started last year when I brought them in just to help them you know weather the storm as it were. So I'm just going to get my pen knife and um, just going to loosen them a bit and then just cut around the, the, loot, the little roots underneath and just see 
what we've got. If you um, go on Instagram, there's a person I follow called Mrs. Bee's Garden. Um, she grows some amazing celeriac. Anyway, I'd love to know her secrets, but yeah, that, that's one, so that's okay. And then let's try this other one. Let's just cut around it with a pen knife. Underneath, that's a bit looser. Yeah, well, there you go. You can see what's underneath. Don't give me give, give them a clean off, and then I can show you show you what they actually uh, what they look like. But uh, yeah, quite pleased with them. They'll make quite a nice meal, I think, tonight. We'll figure out something. Uh, got any good recipes? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, that's what we've got at the moment. Right now, I did peek under here a couple of weeks ago and rejig the cardboard and rearrange a bit, but I haven't looked since then. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, in a previous video about doing dahlias and I normally um, store them really carefully um, indoors in a tub having washed them all off, but this year due to time constraints and actually no room indoors at the moment, uh, they've just been left out here in the polytunnel. I mean, as you probably know, dahlias are not a good fan um, of very damp conditions in the winter and cold conditions. So if it's very frosty, um, you're likely to lose them. We're almost definitely gonna lose them. Uh, but also if it's very damp as well, if the soil is very damp and cold, then they will rot like that and they go all mushy, um, which is what some of these tubers have done. Anyway, let's see. They've dried out nicely and this compost is sort of quite dry at the bottom here. And, and this one's all right, there's a few soft spots on this one, but yeah, you can see what happens if they get too damp. They also, the, um, the tubers go soft and moldy and start to rot, which is not great. But I think on the whole, these are okay, not looking too bad. Uh, what I find about dahlias is when they're growing, you know, and you cut them and you take cuttings and so on, they smell heavenly. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. I really like the smell of dahlias. Uh, but when they're going off and rotting, they really, really stink. They're not at all like, um, you know, when you're, when you're taking cuttings and stuff. They're the sort of the exact opposite, uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Anyway, so we've got quite a few here, Bella Barmira, Cafe Au Lait, so I think they're going to be okay. I've got a few more down here in this tub. Um, the cuttings I took last year, I did a, a video, I don't know if you remember, or if you've seen it, uh, I did a video on how to take cuttings for dahlias, and these are some of the ones that survived. So I've got a few in there that have survived. And then down here, I've got another one down there. So what I want to do with these now is get them moved over to a, one of the side benches here, uh, because I want to prepare this table now for sort of sowing seeds and just have a bit of space. business this garden isn't it anyway yeah this compost I think basically it's green it's green waste I think I'm not sure I haven't read it so actually don't quote me on that and I apologize Melkor if it's not um, but I did find a bit of plastic in the first bag and I've just found a bit of string in this one <laughs> yeah you can see it's actually quite fine I don't know if it'd be good for seed sowing or whether I should sieve it a little bit but um, I've used coarser to be honest and as onion seeds aren't you know that tiny I'm, I'm not too worried I shall just uh, I should probably just use it to be honest. I've got different types of cell trays I'm sure you have too. Uh, a lot of these come from container wires. Um, these deep ones uh, I tend to use for peas and beans because they like to get the roots down so that's what they're for. Um, I've got some Charles Dowding uh, trays here I think that's, they're the ones, container-wise. Charles Dowding's 60s, yeah. Uh, and these are really good for growing um, sort of lettuce seedlings, things like that, where you just want to grow masses really quickly, not waste a lot of compost, um, but as soon as they get to a certain size and you get them out in the ground. So yeah, they're, they're quite good. Um, and then I've got these others from container-wise as well. I think they're container-wise. Um, if not, they're, they're quite good. Um, 
the hole in the bottom is a bit small but I just get my little finger in there to push the seedlings out so um, I use those as well. Oh and finally um, these are sort of the sort of a hard plastic but things you can get from the um, garden centre uh, but what I did is because the holes in the bottom weren't that big I made them a bit bit uh, larger so I can get my finger through and, and push them out when I want so yeah I just drilled holes. Yeah, this time of year, really exciting, isn't it? You're sort of beginning to plan ahead and, and think what you're going to grow. You've probably got most of your seeds or you're still buying them, a bit like me. I went out the other day and I bought, uh, what was it, more celeriac seeds um, and lots of flower seeds. I'll put them in a screenshot here. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've, I was totaling up in the record book how much I've spent on seeds and potato tubers and stuff this year. I think it comes to nearly 100 quid. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's not good, is it? But I have got lots of other seeds from previous years uh, and also save seeds as well. So I mean, if you think about it, our seed inventories, they're enormous, aren't they? How, much, how many seeds we have and what value they have. Um, I think I've got mine totaled up in the ref book, but it'd be interesting. I'll try and put it on the screen if I can work out how much it is. But um, yeah, how, how many seeds we we carry and how, much, how many we buy, how many we use, and then we save over from year to year, and then how much food and flowers that um, that produces. And actually, that's the great thing about the record book. I can tally up. I know I've spent, saved about 33 quid on food so far this year alone, and we're only in February. Uh, and that doesn't include things like squashes and things and everything that's in the freezer. Because um, I'm really, what I'm doing in the record book is just totaling up what I harvest in that current year so it'll just be 2023 whether or not that food lasts over into 2024 if you see what I mean or longer um, I've still got jam from 2018 <laughs> um, yeah so the actual value of what we we're spending on seeds the cost we're spending on seeds compared to what we actually save um, I'm going to be really interested to see what it works out at this year because um I'm convinced that I, I save more than I spend, to be honest. Okay, right, that compost is looking nice actually, nice and fluffy. So, let's get some trays, put that in there, and then just start layering the compost in, and then wipe it over. Right, so that's uh, my do for the moment. I'm just going to um, tap that down a bit and then somewhere I've got an empty tray I'll just use that to firm them down right put this to one side for the minute now I've got the trays all prepped what I'm going to do is water the compost before I put the seeds in uh, the reason I do that is, and I think most people do, is just to settle the compost before you put the seeds in. Otherwise, if you put the seeds in first and then you water, they go everywhere and don't stay where you want them. So that can be really frustrating. Uh, so the best thing is to do is to water them, uh, then make your holes and then cover them back over and then you're done. You can lightly water if you've got a very light rose afterwards, but uh, this is just what I do. I'm just using the end of a bamboo cane here, uh, but yeah, just making a small hole for these seeds. Uh, and what I'm gonna do with the onions this year is I'm going to uh, multi-sow them. So I'm gonna put about four little um, seeds into each of these little holes. Uh, and then when they grow, they'll grow apart, push each other apart. And you end up having um, four onions in the space of where you'd normally just have one. Uh, and got this little trick from Charles Dowding. Um, of note his no dig fame. So thank you, Charles, for that one. So I haven't. I had no. That's not true. I have grown multi sown onions a little bit last year. Um, not very many. Um, most of them I've grown. Um, <sighs> as singles and they've come out really well. I'll try and show a picture on the screen. Um, I think I had some white ones last year. Uh, I can't remember the name. I'll see if I can remember, see if I can look back on them, but they're given to be a plot neighbor and actually they were 
sets. So I think the um, first ones I'm going to start with actually, um, which I'm not going to multi sow, are these mammoth. Uh, and I got these seeds last year. I, I'm sure they'll still be viable this year, but um, I'm going to sow these first. I'm going to do one um, tray of these. Uh, they're quite big seeds, big black seeds. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if you'll be able to see them here. They're quite quite big seeds. Um, when I grew them last year, they didn't last long in storage. And so, and they didn't get as big as I'd hoped either. <laughs> but that, that's down to me, not down to the seeds, I think. So anyway, I'm going to put one of these in each, uh, just to give them a chance to get as big as they can. Right, that's one tray of those done. And uh, just make sure the compost is in contact with the seeds. And I shall probably take them indoors actually, put them on a south facing windowsill, let them germinate and as soon as they've germinated they'll come back out here into the polytunnel. I think the temperature at the moment actually, I don't know if you can see, is 19.4. Uh, it's been up to 28 today so I think they'll be fine. <laughs> right I've done all the onions, the last one I've got to do are the uh, spinach, the giant winter. You can see these seeds there really quite big, quite a pale sort of a creamy sandy colour. So I'm actually just going to put one each of these into each cell. I suppose you, you could put two in and then select the best one. Then you're probably more or less guaranteed of having sown one, but I usually find that they, uh, they germinate. Right, so I'll just cover those over uh, and that's all the seeds done. Now I just want to get these chilies out. I uh, have an old kitchen knife I use for this sort of thing. Although I feel a bit bad about taking them out. Um, we will have others in the um, in the greenhouse. Well, that's all of those out which uh, feels good. Uh, no more rogue chilies everywhere. <laughs> um, right I'm going to go and wash those celeriac now so I'll be back in a minute. I just want to show you what they look like. Right, <laughs> there they are, all washed up and nice and clean-ish. Uh, Obviously I've got to do a bit of a better job before we eat them, but uh, yeah. So just take tops off, put them in the compost and uh, to, um, well, not huge, but okay celeriac, so they'll be good for tea. Right, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that one. Hope you have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.